quick update on our Melvin heat engine, the universal generator. Generates electricity from any heat source. Wood, propane, natural gas, waste oil, concentrated solar, you name it. We've got an exciting update for you. We're going to cover a pressurization. We've got an updated pump we want to, we want to uh, show. We also have our first uh, interface uh, to a battery bank we want to demonstrate and more. So stay tuned, sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy. Thank okay, well, welcome back to Sefton Motors. Typically we'll do a lot of our testing in the afternoon, but when the mornings are cold, we'll come in and we'll get the testing started. That way we can use the firebox to help heat up the shop. It works as a great space, space heater. Very simple to get started. <clears throat> so Melvin, fully assembled, ready to run. It's the firebox out of this end. We do have a, our own little ventilation system in here for exhausting. And um, we do have a test setup over there. We do have some testing over here that you wouldn't typically have on a uh, in, in the final setting. But we use this just to monitor things. So we'll come over. Turn on the propane. Hold the open, open, hold the valve open, and just spark her up. And I'll just hold that valve open until the sensor heats up a little bit. And then let it go. It probably takes about five minutes or so for the valve to heat up before it's ready to start running. Maybe ten minutes at the longest. But during this time, the whole shop will get heated by that firebox in, in very, very quickly. And just to once again go over some of the changes, latest changes on the Melvin. You can see here we've gotten rid of the insulated collar and instead have the flange collar that the firebox just hooks onto. So much nicer and easier for getting things started. Uh, we moved the, the pump to the top, got the new pump in there, I'll show you that a little later. We've got a breather sniffer valve on the bottom. You can also use that as an external air pressure inlet. You want to use your uh, compressor to bring the pressure up faster than it would through the pump. <coughs> you could certainly use that. On this one, the back covers off. And over here we have a little bit of our uh, our Output setup, panel setup. I'll bring the bring the, the photo over just to show you. Very simple setup here. We're just getting kind of started with this. We've got the you can see coming off the side of the engine right here. We've got the hub motor that put produces AC going to a bridge rectifier. We've got the DC coming out of that bridge rectifier, and that DC will then go into this little box here, which is a very small charge controller, which <clears throat> will control whether the, uh, how much is flowing to the, to the battery bank. Here we have a simple 12 volt battery bank, and then we're feeding that battery bank to this, uh, this small uh, inverter here where we have a, a little uh, wattage measurement device plugged into it at this time, but I'll pull it off. You can see it just has a couple outlets on it there. And that's our simple test setup on top. It's just a multimeter so we can check some of the some of the inputs and whatnot. And this is when we're doing this testing uh, unpressurized, so we have the back cover off. You can see the you can see the new pump set up right there. It's working quite well. Much simpler, less costly, less complex, less parts than the, than the prior pump version. In the middle, you can see we have the water jacket. We'll run, we'll run for uh, you know 10 or 15 minutes with no water in there. It won't hurt anything. Won't get that hot. And then as it heats up, we will. We'll get the water jacket in play, which adds a huge mass of, of uh, thermal uh, absorption to the cold end of the engine. All right, for just a quick uh, insight into our pump update, 
This is our existing or was our existing pump, if you remember this, 3D printed body with a piston, spring-loaded piston, a bearing to release some of the load on the rings, and then another bearing up here that the KM presses down on. And then this part here uh, basically just fits uh, uh, onto the interior of the Kinemax housing and sticks out to the exterior uh, air. Uh, and you can see if I take this, if I take some of these parts out, you can see I've got a small axle, got a little bearing, then I've got the piston, and the piston does actually have two uh, rings on it, and then in here is an aluminum sleeve that fits into that 3D printed part. So as you can see, there are a number of parts, including an input and output check valve that's built into that current model. Here you can see that, that pump uh, being actuated by the cam on the right hand side of the flywheel there. Every time the cam comes around, it depresses that piston, pumps a little shot of air into the cylinder, pops back up again, sucking the air from the outside and pushing it into the cam that's out. So that's our, that's our previous uh, pump and, it, and it, does, it does work fine, but it's a lot of parts, a lot of fitting, and a lot of, a lot of cost. So we look at our, our newer um, pump set up now, I think it's a vast improvement. So we've switched over to something that looks like this, which is basically a diaphragm based pump. And what we do is we just crush that diaphragm and to uh, generate the, the pumping pressure for filling the kinematics housing or for maintaining the pressure in the kinematics housing. So this is just nothing more than a 3D printed body with a uh, silicone diaphragm. Then it has a spring on here to bring the diaphragm back. And in here, you can see there are two uh, little umbrella valves, I think is what they're called. And one for the input, one for the output. And it's tremendously simplified. They're just uh, a couple parts. We probably save about uh, $30 in in cost and then another probably thirty dollars in fabrication and it actually is uh works quite nicely in its final orientation it looks something like this and then in the engine it'll be uh up on the top and as the kinematics uh revolve there'll actually be a cam on the axle housing that'll go around with that with that flywheel and engage and activate the pump every time the engine cycles. Works pretty nice. Here's a short video of it actually working. It. One of the nice things about this pump design is it's so easy to modify the volume of air that's uh, exhausted just by changing the diameter of that, uh, of that cam. Okay, just to continue a little bit more on our uh, generator on the output side, how we have this particular one configured. Once again, right now you hear buzzing. That's the charge capacitor, the uh, charge controller. It is, the batteries are right now at about 9.7 volts undercharged. It's, it's, it's beeping because it doesn't like the low voltage. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and engines up to heat. We're going to just just uh, just start it. And now you can see it's starting to take some of the some of the input from the engine to charge the batteries. See that it's under load. If we go ahead and pull off, if we go ahead and pull off on one of these leads. See how so of the unloaded version of the engine versus the loaded. So this is loaded. And we can change the, the output speed depending on the load. And this is a 
that I just steady state. It'll charge up these batteries. The engine doesn't have too much uh, water in the water jacket, so it's a little bit, a little bit of vibration. If we were to fill the water jacket all the way up, that would probably go down to a more manful amount. Just a quick update. So now if I look at that charge control, we've gone about, about, about 9-7 when we started just a few minutes ago to 10.4. Uh, so it's charging up the batteries. And we're running a little bit slower here, but this speed will increase as those batteries get charged up and the, uh, the current goes down a little bit. But once again, if I unload the system, that's what the engine wants to run at. So we're loading up pretty good here because our battery is so discharged. I wanted to give you a quick update on our pressure test and how that's coming. It's really key for us to move from a one kilowatt to more like a three kilowatt engine. So this is a place we've been spending a lot of focus. This is just some of our test footage from that. Uh, some people ask why we have the red cherry or the soccer ball on the back. It just allows us when we close that cover to reduce the amount of back pressure on the piston as it's coming back. But yet as the pressure builds in the engine, uh, allows that to hold the pressure in that in that environment. And here you can see the pressure. We're at about probably uh, two 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 psi in a normal ambient non-pressurized environment for the engine. And here you will see we'll be going up to about four psi. And the the pumps are working quite well. Both the the first initial first generation pump and the second generation pump they are doing their job. The issue we're having is we have um, the Kinemax housing is, is, is just way too leaky. And we, we see in how it's fabricated, there's, um, there's a lot of leakage coming through the seams. And that's what we're working on putting to bed. And here in this particular run here, we, we have an external pressure uh, going into the engine of about uh, 10 PSI. Yet we're only seeing about 4 PSI uh, in the chamber itself. So there's a lot of leakage occurring and we really need to get that out of the system and that's what we're working on now. So you'll see, uh, you'll see next uh, one, this, this, uh, this back balloon, uh, back, uh, it's actually a kickball, I think it is. It's actually holding pretty well, it's pretty tough, it should hold well over 10 PSI and right now we're maybe getting to 4. And just to give you a little illustration of what that looks like, we do plot out and look at the data from the chamber as the end is running. And you can see here the next couple of charts uh, showing that. And these are just uh, short runs. But this one you can see the, the nature of that pressure uh, growing a little bit and then, and then dropping. And we need to really just be able to capture that pressure and, and hold it. This is a little bit better here. We're getting up to about 4 PSI here, which is just about double what the ambient uh, pressure is. So we're getting there, but it's just going to take us some more time. All right, next I want to talk a little bit about uh, just some general power generation concepts. Let's talk about power generation just for a minute. So the typical power generation sources are, as you're seeing on the screen here, right? Everyone's familiar with these. Our typical portable generators that we use today, and here's the Honda. This is a great product, 2,000 watt little portable generator for a thousand bucks. It's a great product, but it's stuck in just running off gasoline. If we look at what happened in North Carolina, all these people who had portable generators, they couldn't get the gas because when the electricity goes out, the gas stations goes down. And sooner than later, the natural gas pipelines go down. If we look at in North Carolina from that one hurricane, people were without power for over a month, right? This is current, how many people are still without power. There were thousands of people without power. It's the beautiful thing about the Melvin. It runs off of any heat source. It can run off of wood. It can run off of propane. It can run off of natural gas. It can run off of waste oil. You could concentrate solar to run the Melvin heat engine to generate your electricity. It's the beautiful thing about it. 
So get hot, get your Melvin, get it started. One last piece of news, big news. I have end of the year sale going on. We're selling the Melvin for $1,999 from now to the end of the year. Go out, get yours now. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for all your patience on our deliveries. And we'll see you around the next update.